Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Parker Gaming. Today I learned Svelte Kit Series. Svelte Series. I have a little bit of cold, so my voice is a little low. So just throwing that out there. We all doing well. Let's go ahead and dive in. Today we're going to go ahead and at, start implementing dark mode in our Svelte Kit application with Tailwind. So let's go ahead and look right at our demo here. So here's our same application we've been working on. We have a little toggle up here in the upper right that says dark. Um, if I go ahead and sign in real quick. Um, and then you could see forms are, are, are different. If I go into the different page, uh, you know, there's some, some little issues here and there, like this little bar I didn't fix, but it's kind of a work in progress. And I'll just want to show you quickly how you could implement it. You know, these, these aren't changed yet, but for the most part, we have the structure in place and I'm going to show you how you could implement it. And then, so the design, I kind of took based off my similar design on my, this is my blog, uh, where I have my dark light, dark and light mode. So I have my little kitty cat flashlight, but, um, and then, uh, as well as listen addict, which is my other site that I have here and the same kind of dark mode. You know, this doesn't have the border on the cards. Um, this one, I decided to have a little border on the cards. And here I decided to have border on cards. So, you know, kind of just play with it, figure out your design for your site. So I'm not going to show you every detail and every single thing that I changed here, but I'm going to show you the most important things. So the first thing is in our Tailwind config, I've added a dark mode class. So if you're looking in here, we have um, dark mode options. So the first one is media. And so that's going to basically use the prefers color scheme. And basically that's going to use your settings uh, within your operating system, say if you prefer dark mode, it's going to always set it to dark mode if you prefer light. Now the problem with that, of course, is maybe you want to be able to toggle it without having to change your entire operating system. Well, um, you can't do it that way. So to do that, you have to do toggling dark mode manually. So the class method. Now instead of dark class being applied to perverse colors, they will be applied whenever dark class is presented earlier in the HTML tree. So they have an example here. Let me make it a little bigger real quick, where they have just class of dark, and anything within it is going to get the dark class. So it's fairly simple to implement, and let's go ahead and show you how I did it. So we have dark mode class here, and then in our light, or layout here, this is the outermost layout, I have class dark here. So this is using the Svelte expression for whether this is true or false. This will get the dark class. So dark class is just set to true by default. And you could do some magic in here. We will later on. And then we're going to pass in the binded version down into our nav. So that way when this variable changes in our nav, it'll be reflected up here in our class. And then so down here, we're going to export let dark. So this is coming in from the layout. And then we have just this link here. We'll throw this in an endpoint in a future episode. And basically, I'm toggling it uh, to be the opposite of whatever it currently is. And I'm just going to display out the word light or dark, uh, whether it's light or dark for now. So we'll throw an icon on there, similar to what I did uh, you know, on Listen Addict and um, what I did on my blog here. And we'll go ahead and we'll figure out how to use local storage and cookies so that way we can make this work and endpoints to make this work with and without JavaScript on. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that, you know, I'm kind of pretty proud of on my blog here. Um, there's a lot of really like great blogs out there and other things that have dark mode, but, you know, cool thing is mine works and it remembers that you have dark mode and light mode. And a lot of people don't take the time to do the little nitty-gritty detail details like that. So that's how the overall structure is set up. So from there, it's just a matter of adding the dark and light classes. Actually, really just the dark classes. So we'll just continue with the nav here. And I'll just kind of walk through them. So we want to set the text to white. Dark on hover, we're going to set the primary color as the background to primary 700. And then the black background. So, and like the black background is basically for this register um, or for the sign out leak because that's the only one that really needs that. The other ones will just be passed through since, since they're just 
links here. This is a input type of submit. So that covers those on our main index here. So this is the list of all of the posts here. Let's go ahead and sign in again. So we have our post new post button here. In dark mode, we're going to send a text to white and then the hover, etc. So that just makes them match all of these. This is something that again that you know I sh I will export all of this out into a shared class because this is repeated code. I just haven't yet. The post form, we'll come back to that in a moment. On the list here, we're going to have this dark border as well as the border gray 200. That's what's going to give us the these this border around all of the text here. And then for each post, we're going to give it the background color that's appropriate. And then again, in the form and the card, we will look at each of those independently here. So let's go ahead and look at the post form real quick. So down here is where we start. So I transition. I moved this form out a little bit. I had a class on here for margin, and I removed that. And then when we have the shadows, when we know we're going to need the dark mode, and the reason for that is because it's the when it is independently there versus doing the posts new page. So like this one, I haven't completely done. Um, I did change like the edit page here. Uh, oops, just edit. So this one I did change, but didn't fix the new yet. So you can see here, it's just like, again, a matter of going into each of the areas where you have colors defined, background white. We're going to go ahead and set this as background 800, and we're going to have a whiter light text for the title, as well as the post body, and then the same background here. You know, this this label, um, these label blocks, you might want to extract those out into their own, you know, and then same with any of these kind of blocks that, you know, you have this repetitive code extracted to different components. So dark background gray, placeholder is 200, and then text is white. So, and, it, you know, at this point, to me, the visible eye, it's kind of hard to tell between the gray and white, especially gray 200. So... You know, maybe it's one of those scenarios where I have it set to that right now, but I could just probably get away with setting them all to text white rather than the placeholder gray, or rather than gray. Um, and then the markdown supported, I had a little less subdued. So I do like this to be the 300 here. So that way it's not super bright. And then the submit button we changed. And then this cancel button just kind of left as is. I didn't do any cleanup there. The postcards themselves, these are the individual cards within it. So, you know, the main thing was, you know, setting the, the text to white or the gray 300, you know, posted by. I wanted to be a little subdued. So you could tell the difference between the OK here and this posted by so and so. And then um, otherwise, I did have to on the delete. Again, because this is a actual input button, I had to go ahead and give it the dark text black and published dark gray. I like the 300. It, it, it is enough difference between the white to make a difference. So, And the actual post content here, I did dark gray 100. But again, again, I could probably just have that SB as the white at this point. And then the comment was the 300 as well. I did fix up the edit, like I showed you very briefly, and you could see I see background white, dark background, this with the border. I could probably copy this over for the new. So if we were to open this up and go to new here, and let's just drop that in here real quick. Format that too. 
So now if I go to posts new, uh, it looks like I still have the extra margin. I don't necessarily need that extra margin around it here. There we go. So clean that up. So they, you know, these, these two match one another. Again, we could probably wrap all of this into a component if we wanted to. The comment form. So if I'm over here and I wanted to do a comment, it's the same thing as the post form where I have the exact same, you know, this is white placeholder is 200 background is gray, gray 200. Again, I don't think it's too much of a difference, but anywhere you have a color, you have the dark as well. And, you know, maybe if you don't export these into their own components, maybe you want to go ahead and just throw the colors into a given um, area and just import the color properly. So you can have them tied together um, anywhere. It's supposed to be one. It should also be the other. Unless you have, of course, an area in your application where you want it to normally be white. And instead of being black, it's in this particular instance, gray 900 or something. Um, and then the slug here. This is for the, the comments. I'm just going to show you real quick. So this dark border gray scenario here, that's why we have this extra little repeated line down here. Um, because I'm not checking that we actually have any comments. So, you know, this would be a scenario where you might want to say class, um, I don't know if we can actually do dark border with spell kit like that. So what I'll just do is I'll just throw it in here. And I might go like this. Uh, maybe I want to say... So... Now that we don't have any in there, we, we can go ahead and just ignore that. But if I click into this one, all the borders show up. And then we'll view more, of course. And just had to throw text, dark text white on there. And all of those show up appropriately. And then I didn't change the settings, but you could see on the sign in and sign out. I Again, I changed just the background, the placeholder, and then the text. So. Fairly simple overall. Um, of course, this doesn't remember you yet, so that'll be part two. And I will show you how to implement this to work with and without JavaScript on via dark mode or via cookies and endpoints, and um, as well as having it in local storage and a store. And then we'll also go ahead and we'll throw a little icon on there to make it look a little pr prettier. Um, if you like and subscribe to this, that'd be fantastic. Support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee, etc. I appreciate you guys and girls, and good luck coding. Thank you. Bye.